Okay, Mr. Music back here on to number 17 from the chapter 6 test review. Um, so we come up here and we read carefully. Frank has two same size rectangles. Okay, here's his two rectangles. They're the same size. They're not squares. They look close to squares, but the problem told us they're rectangles, so we know they're rectangles because it told us. Divided into the same number of equal parts. Okay, into the same number of equal parts. One rectangle has three fourths parts shaded. So one of these rectangles has to represent three fourths, and the other has to represent one third. But this doesn't mean we break this into three parts and this one into four parts because that would be a different number of parts and it says they have they need to be divided into the same number of equal parts okay so what it what it means is we need to find a common denominator we need to find a number that um, both three and four can go into so I pull out the two denominators because I'm trying to find a common denominator and I find the multiples of each. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. How far do you go? Again, like I said in one of my earlier videos, I usually go out about 5. So you can see here I went out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But again, I could always go back and go further if I need to. I can go 18, 21, and so on if I need to. So let's do it for 4 now. 4, 8. Multiples mean I'm just counting by that number. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. There's 5 out. Okay, now let's see what they have in common. Okay, 3, 4, no. 6, 8, no. 9, 12, no. Tw oh, 12. So 12 and 12 they have in common. So what I want to do is I want to break each one of these up into 12 parts. That way they have the same number of equal parts. Okay. So let's think about a, an array, right? An array to give us 12 could be 2 by 6. What else could it be? It could be 1 by 12, right? Or it could be 3 by 4. So I'm going to do a 3 by 4. So I'm going to cut this across into three sections. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go down into four. First I'm going to cut it in half. Then I'm going to cut it in half again on either side. So now I have four across. Again, your lines will be a lot straighter. It's kind of hard for me to draw straight lines with this on the computer. Okay. Now, the other one, I want the same thing. 3 by 4, because I, I want it to have 12. Okay, so now they both have 12 equal parts. Now I need to shade 3 fourths. Well, if I look here, this side, this side of the um, array is 3, and this side is 4. Okay, so 4, that's my denominator. So I want, there's four columns here. I want to shade three of those four columns, three of the four. So one, uh, one column, that's three boxes, but only one of the four columns, right? We broke it up into four columns. There's two columns, and there's three columns, okay? Now over here, we have the same thing. We have a 3 by 4 array, but this time the 3, we want to focus on the 3. So I want of these 3 rows, I want to shade one of them. So see there's 1, 2, 3 total rows, and I had to shade one of them because to represent one-third. So this, this rectangle now represents three, 
three, three, that's nine out of the 12. This rectangle represents nine twelfths, and this rep rectangle represents four out of the total of 12. Okay. Now let's look at part B. Is there more than one possible answer to part A? Well, let's look at that first question first. Is there more than one possible answer to part A? Well, we got one answer. Well, to figure this out, we need to know, is there more than just one common denominator between these two numbers? So we go back to our list. Well, we only found one, but remember, what did we say about multiples? We can keep going forever. So if I want to see if there's another one, I'm going to keep going. Maybe there is. 18, 21, Oh, you can't see that. Let me write it up here. 21, 24, and again, Mr. Music, how far do you go? Uh, just go a few more, four or five more, and then come down to your fours. I'm going to do the same thing, 20, 24. Now I'm going to go down here because I'll run out of room. 28, 32, okay. Did a few more. I'm going to stop. Now, I already noticed, look what number repeated. 24 here, and there's a 24 here as well. So I know I could have also broken these up into 24. Now I could keep going. There's going to be even more than just two possible answers. There's actually going to be a whole lot of possible answers. So is there more than one possible answer to part A? Yes. That's the first part. If so, which there was, did you find the least number of parts into which both rectangles could be divided? Explain your reasoning. Well, we know that yes, in fact, we came up with the least number of parts because we found the least common denominator, the LCD. Now, if we would have used 24, our answer would still be correct up here. We can use 24 to get a correct answer for part A. But then we would have to say, yes, there's more than one possible answer. But no, we didn't find the least number of parts because we didn't use the least common denominator. But in our example here, yes, in fact, we did use the smallest number they had in common. So the smallest number that the smallest common multiple of 3 and 4 was 12. So if so, did you find the least number of parts under which how explain your reasoning? So, yes, well, in here I can elaborate on this one. Let me erase real quick. Again, um, remember, you can always go back and rewind if you need to see my writing again. So to answer this first part, is there more than one possible answer to part A? I'm going to elaborate. Yes, comma, there is more than one possible answer. Uh, my handwriting's ugly. Your guys's will be much better. <clears throat> if so, did you find the least number of parts into which both triangles could be divided? Yes. I know I used the least number of parts, I'm going to abbreviate number, least number of parts because I found the, what do we call that? We found the LCD or least common denominator. So now I've answered both parts. Yes, there's more than one possible. Oh, I didn't put answer at the end here, did I? I'm going to put my little uh, interject caret here. I'm going to interject this one possible answer, I should say. And again, your handwriting will be much better than mine. Uh, writing on this computer is not easy. And then, so I answered the first part. And then the second part, 
Yes, I know I used the least number of parts because I found the LCD, the least common denominator. All right, thanks again for tuning in, and we, I'll see you on the next video.